Morning, you guys. How are you doing? An unexpected video today. We were planning on potentially going to Cannes or to Italy and just sort of taking the day as a surprise. But then all of a sudden, at Becoming Patrick, who is actually, you guys often ask uh, uh, who I work with and stuff like that. He is my agent. He works with the agency that I'm with. Uh, he just showed up today in this beautiful 4C Spider. Handed us the keys and said, you guys can have a go. So what we're going to do is compare the Lotus, well, my Lotus Exige Sport 380 to the uh, Alfa Romeo 4C Spider because when I was buying the car, I, can, I definitely considered the 4C and everyone was telling me about the 4C and I finally got them and I'll be able to drive them back to back and show you guys what it's like. So we're going to hop into the cars, go to Route de la Turbie, which is our most uh, sort of common reviewing road. Route? <laughs> that was a mix of route and road. Anyways, we'll go there to see how it is because I know that road really well so I'll be able to properly, um, you know, experience the Alpha 4C and all of that stuff. So, are we going to do another spin? We've been spinning so much though. The spins are nice the though. The spins are nice. Shall we do it? Which Let's side are you going? You're in this side or that side? I don't know. Okay, surprise us. <laughs> Do it. Hopefully there's not too much wind for you guys, but I thought I would just kick this off by talking about the aesthetics, the exterior and interior aesthetics of the two cars. So, first of all, price points. This car comes at around 70,000 euros, which is not far from being half of the price of this car. So this one's at about 125, 130 with options. Uh, and this, that's also including options for this. It's got an option such as the red paint, which is Rosso Alpha, which is not the triple layer paint, which is Rosso Competizione, which is a beautiful triple layer paint. Whereas this car has a one-off paint job. So it's got a bunch of one-off things on the Exige 380 here that you see in this particular spec, which has made it a bunch more expensive. Um, but yeah, apart from that, they're pretty similar. They both weigh around 1,100 kilos. That's in spider form for the Alpha 4C. And this is a, officially a coupe. We've just decided to take the roof off of it. However, this has 380 horsepower and this has 240. This is a turbocharged four liter, uh, sorry, four cylinder engine, whereas that is a supercharged V6. So completely sort of different engines and characteristics, but the same sort of motto of lightness is greatness. So aesthetically, I personally, I mean, I'm obviously mad biased because I put my money where my mouth is and bought this car, but I think this is a much more aggressive sort of supercar looking car, whereas this is a bit more cute. I mean, whilst it does still look, I think it looks kind of cool. It still has that sort of supercar aspect, but I prefer the way the Lotus looks. It's got some cool carbon fiber mirrors on this one. Uh, sorry, not mirrors, uh, lights. That's what you call them, these things, lights. But they're not the awkward spider ones which the coupes used to have. Um, and then on the interior, they're both very basic, um, sort of lightweight interiors. This car has a carbon fiber tub, whereas the Lotus has an aluminium tub. So that makes a big difference in terms of officially the weight. And that's how they managed to get this car being so light, using less carbon fiber on other bits of the, of the bodywork than in the Lotus. Um, but it also makes it very rigid, quite loud at motorway speeds and just sort of quite bumpy. When you get in, the seats in this are nowhere near as sporty as those in the Lotus Exige and it's much more plasticky feeling. There's a lot of Alcantara and leather in the Exige, whereas this, there's a bunch of plastic all over the place. Uh, the steering wheel here is leather, whereas in the Exige, it's Alcantara. And overall, that just feels slightly more expensive when you're in it. I mean, it is nearly double the money, so you can understand it. Things like even just this rear um, panel here, when you lift it for, to get to the boot or anything like that, so much heavier than the carbon one on the, on the Exige. The boot is a lot smaller than in the Exige. And I mean, here's a perfect example. Look at this door card. Here, all completely scratchy plastic. Whereas if we open up the Exige, here it is all Alcantara and leather with contrast stitching. So things like that make a difference. There is a bunch of carbon on the inside of the Exige as well, just not a carbon tub. Now, I've never driven a 4C before, so I'm super excited to get into this and experience it. None of these two cars have power steering. This one doesn't have ABS, so they're sort of back to basics sports cars. But I think it's probably about time I hop in and see how they compare on the road.
Alpha 4C Spider, let's do this. Startup, it's already louder. This car is much louder at uh, idle than the, um, than the Exige is. So we're gonna put it into manual mode straight away and kick it off in dynamic and then after move into uh, to race mode where the traction's off because apparently that's where all the fun happens. Well, the first main key difference between the two cars is this, the double clutch gearbox in the Lotus. It's a manual box, whereas in this we've got a double clutch, flappy paddle gearbox, which makes a massive difference to the overall experience. They're approaching the same theory that a car needs to be light to be enjoyable. But they're approaching it under different angles. We've got AO holding the camera, so I hope it's not, uh, not too shaky all over the place and you can hear me with the wind. But yes, initially, the first thing you feel is that it's quite a bit slower than the Lotus. This having 240 horsepower makes a big difference. Now then, the second thing you notice is that this, like the Lotus, does not have power-assisted steering. So it's kind of the opposite of what you want, really. It's super heavy at low speed, but then as soon as you get going, it becomes quite wishy-washy and light at high speed, which is not necessarily what you want. Like, around a corner like this, it's really heavy, but then as soon as you get on it, the steering gets light, the shifts are quick, they're smooth, efficient, sounds a bit like a fart when you change gear, I'm not gonna lie. But yeah, one thing that's weird, let's talk about the brakes for a second. They're not as crisp and, and sort of natural feeling as the AP Racing brakes in the uh, in the Lotus. And also the pedal is angled at a really weird angle. So you really need to press on the brakes in order to get any sort of performance out of them. Whilst it is quick, it's definitely a quick car, the Lotus is on, on a different level in terms of performance. Now then, in terms of how it feels on the interior, it feels a lot more cramped than the Lotus. And the, uh, the materials don't feel as good. For example, the Alcantara steering wheel in the Lotus, you're sort of really gripped onto it, whereas this feels like slightly cheap leather and your hands are sort of slipping all over the place when you're really trying to grip the steering wheel. So it's not ideal as far as that's concerned. Let's try and overtake this truck. Okay, done. It's definitely a, a lot wider than the Lotus as well and you can feel that when you're on the road. But you feel like you're in a little supercar. It's bright, it's loud, you got your double clutch gearbox, it's pretty quick as well. Okay, we've put it into race mode. No traction, that was flat out, so it doesn't break loose when you're in a straight line. Now in terms of the actual handling of the car, it's quite bumpy, you feel the bumps, it's a harder, it's a harder sort of setup than in the Lotus, but that's probably down to the carbon fiber monocoque. That does mean, however, that you have no body roll around the corners, it's got a bit less front end grip, I mean a fair amount less front end grip and the Lotus and let's see what the rear grip is like. It will slide, it will definitely slide this car and because it's a central uh, engine, a mid engine configuration, it will try and, it snaps and it will try and pivot around so you need to catch it quite quickly. But it's not as, um, as honest as the Lotus is in the way that the Lotus will sort of tell you this is how much grip you have now and you can feel everything through the steering wheel. If you run over a sweet wrapper, you'd be able to tell what brand it is in the Lotus, whereas in this you'd have no idea. It's kind of a bit more all over the place and you're guessing a bit more how much grip you have. So the steering isn't as, a, as honest as in the Lotus, um, but the handling is impressive. There's zero body roll in this car really and you're really able to sort of chuck it into corners and as long as you can hold on to the sort of wishy-washy steering it's really not that bad and you can have fun there's enough power to sort of break the rear wheels loose a bit and nothing crazy so yeah it breaks loose and it'll sort of try and hold it a bit for you but if you keep your foot in you can you can slide it out a bit more so it's definitely good fun it sounds fantastic you can hear the turbos coming in as well but it does feel um it feels like a level underneath what the Exige is. Um, but, I mean, for the price point, as I said, this isn't really a fair comparison because this is, near as makes no difference, half of the money. So you can't really compare them completely. How are you doing with the camera there? Doing good. <laughs> um, you can't really compare them 
sort of honestly because it is about half the money so of course the materials don't feel as sort of uh, exclusive as in the Lotus <coughs> you can't spec it out like you can with the Lotus and yeah it's a lot slower but then again you could get this and an RS3 or this and an 845 for the price of the Lotus so you know you have to give it some leeway as well but people have been asking me if I consider this when I bought the Lotus definitely this was one of the highest uh, cars on my list of, of cars I was considering because they're so similar and I do like it it's got a certain character I mean it's Alfa Romeo it's bright red it's wide it's low it's loud so it's got this particular character it's got a lot of emotion which is my favorite thing in a car if a car doesn't have emotion then I'm not interested but this definitely has its own particular character through its quirks as well like the weirdly placed brake pedal you're sitting slightly with your feet facing to the right you, the steering is a bit all over the place but that adds a certain character to the car but now I'm super interested to hop back into the Lotus and see what that's like after driving this I do like this car a lot do I think it's better than the Lotus and do I prefer it to the Lotus no but I mean I knew that already because I bought the Lotus for that reason um, but it's definitely a good car with some quirks it's nowhere near perfect but it's good, they've done a good job. And it's sort of what it says on the can. We're in the Lotus Exige Sport 380 now. Different noise, this being a V6, supercharged. We're back in a manual car. So this also has no power steering, which does mean that at uh, slow speeds, the steering's quite heavy as well. You feel a bit higher up, you're less low down in the car than you are in the 4C, but where it makes its main difference is under acceleration. Definitely louder. Ah, oh, and already I can feel the difference. The brakes are so much crisper. You can carry so much more speed through the corners, through the front end grip. And it just sounds so much more race car-y. cars so much more I mean acceleration you can barely even compare this thing is a league of its own I'm having to accelerate maybe half throttle where in the 4C I was full throttle so there's a big difference 380 horsepower and the same weight the steering is so much more solid and it just feels easier it's not as wide the steering is, it's very low though, so around corners like this, you need to go quite slowly. It pushes you back in your seat, like the Alpha would never do. And it's just, oh, the brakes are so crisp. The steering, you can feel so much more. And it's so much more controllable, so much louder. the steering you can feel everything that you're doing exactly how much input you're putting into the brake pedal and you can feel the 380 power going its leg. wow and I'm not even in race mode let's whack it into race mode and this is where everything gets serious now so in terms of the positives of the alpha no body roll this has equally as little body roll in terms of uh, the acceleration and the character and the pantomime of the Alpha. This is more. Mr. Gear. It sounds so much more brutal. It's a lot more intimidating because of the noise, because of the acceleration and because of the power that the Alpha is. It's a beast, this car. It is a total beast. It doesn't
doesn't let go as much as the Alpha. It has quite a lot more grip, both front end and back end. type of car for so long they have got nailed being like the Carrera 4S, this would be the GT3 RS. So it's just a more complete version of a similar car with a manual gearbox. Everything feels more solid, there are less squeaks all over the place, there's, there's more feel through the, through the steering, through the brakes, there's more grip, um, there's, there's a nicer sort of layout on the interior. Yeah, it's just a, it's a more complete car. And yes, it's double the money, so of course you know, that's what you'd expect from it. But it's fascinating comparing the two different approaches to a similar sort of a, a way of making a car. So I'm going to park it up now, and we're going to end the video next to the two cars. Well, what a lovely way to spend the day comparing these two. It was absolutely fascinating. It was all improvised, me talking as we were driving, um, but it was incredible to compare as I said two cars that are trying to achieve the same things but going about it in very different ways the 4c is brilliant for the price point it's a really good looking loud fancy car so if you're looking for a supercar experience oh look at this that is pretty cool c62 AMGS. soccer players yeah, yeah, those are the football players. Uh, that's actually one of the top football players for the Monaco football team. Fun fact. Anywho, so these two cars, yeah. The Alpha, if you're in the price point and you want a supercar-like experience, that's the way to go. If you want a properly serious track car that you can use on the road, the XZ380 is the way to go. But yeah, they, um, yeah, they really, when you drive one, it really makes you understand and it complements the strong points of the other car. Um, and it also highlights the less good points of the other cars but it was fascinating doing this thank you very much to at becoming patrick on instagram for organizing this um, so that we could compare the two cars it's been incredible thank you guys for watching as per usual please remember to give this video a thumbs up that would mean the world to us and if you enjoyed it it would be fantastic and we'll see you again for another video very very soon cheers guys